So for this thing, we need to do a few things. We need to build a mirror cell to, um, well, hold the mirror, obviously. And we need to let this into the bearing block. And we need a let into, into the base for the bearing block to ride on. So what I was thinking was I could use the CNC to do a, um, a let in here. And I'm not, I think I might have to do the let into this by hand because there's, I can't see a good way of, um, I can't see a good way of, of carving in a, a let for this to sit inside that bearing. Um, so I'm probably going to have to do that by hand. So this is the uh, donor telescope that um, is donating the mirror to my uh, new telescope. Um, it's a mead, it's a 10 inch, I think it's around four and a half, uh, f four and a half. Um, I'm going to measure it in a sec. But um, the mirror cell is, is weak um, in terms of those springs are much too light. And um, I had to add um, these, uh, these screws here in order to um, actually um, provide a mechanical lockout so that once you've got the uh, mirror collimated, uh, the telescope collimated, you can lock out the springs so that they no longer flex when you tilt the mirror on an angle as you're looking at various points in the sky. So uh, I'm going to, I'm obviously going to build a new mirror cell for that um, as well as uh, the rest of the, the telescope. So the next step is to pull that mirror out and uh, measure its focal length. The other weakness in the mirror cell is that is the venting for cooling the mirror, but that venting does nothing but um, cool the back of this nicely insulating um, piece of, of wood that well insulates the mirror <laughs> from any um, cooling effect. So the only cooling that it gets got was whatever convection currents would pull heat out of the side of the mirror and whatever convection currents there were inside of the tube which you're trying to eliminate anyway so it was very very poorly cooled so that's the other thing that I'm going to be correcting um, is the uh, the cooling uh, for the mirror and as you can see these these springs are just much too light um, until you get them really well compressed but um, you had these funny little spacers in here that um, actually got broken from something. I don't know. I don't know what. Or maybe I... Did I reduce the length of those spacers? I forget. But anyways, it, it just... The telescope was not... Um, it, it's a good donor mirror. Let's put it that way. Okay. We've got a point source of light that is almost... Well, you, you want to get it as close to um, perpendicular the plane of the image and the reflection, um, uh, the, so the source and the reflection. You want to get that plane as perpendicular to the mirror as reasonable. And then you move the um, apparatus back and forth until you've got a tightly focused um, spot uh, corresponding to your, your image. So LEDs put out a pretty um, tight spot and you can get that focus down pretty nice. And then the distance between the um, reflected image and the mirror is twice your focal length.
Okay, so we've got to cut out some triangles. Clean the edge up a bit on the sander. Okay, so that gives us our basic um, mirror cell right there. So the mirror sits in there and I need to um, drill and uh, tap and countersink for these corners and those will just bolt together. And then we need some compliant um, connection between these triangles and these bars. <clears throat> and we need some low friction um, pins basically to mount on here. This triangle might be a little too big. It's probably more like that. But in any event, this member needs to be able to pivot. Three points determine a plane, and so it needs to find its plane um, with the back of the mirror, which isn't plain, but it it needs to be compliant. So what I'm thinking is um, crown nuts um, bolted onto here with um, a hole through the crown nut. So the outside of the crown nut, and I'm going to use some sort of nylon crown nut, um, or cap nut. I'm not sure what you call those. I don't know what you call those. But anyways, um, so countersink a hole. so that it pivots on this bearing surface, just barely. It doesn't need to pivot much. Um, so just um, a little bit of a counter bore in there and it'll be able to pivot on top of it. And then um, uh, Loctite a uh, fastener on top so that it, uh, it doesn't f fall out. No, just to be on the safe side. And uh, that will manage that piece. And then similar, but in nylon, or maybe even get some of these in nylon, get them, get them a little larger, although those, those seem all right. It doesn't need to be that, um, that low friction. I mean, lower the friction, the better, but still, it doesn't need to be that low friction. Um, and then some uh, nylon, nylon cap nuts for on top of these four, and then, or those three, and then you have compliance, and then you have the three points that are supporting your your mirror. And that is going to sit inside of the bottom ring. Sort of like that. So just let these pieces into the back of there and then now we've got um, a place for the mirror to sit. Oh, that reminds me. Um, it needs to have um, the, the mirror, well, it'll sit there, but it also needs to be supported on the edges. So I was thinking just um, something simple mounted into the sides of this would be sufficient to um, uh, hold the mirror up, but I need to figure out at what height the center of gravity of the mirror is going to be in order to put in um, appropriate supports. I could mount something onto here, but I don't think I left myself enough space. I think I, I made this um, fairly close to the mirror diameter. Um, well, we can check that. Yeah, I did make it fairly close to the mirror diameter, so that's going to mean, yeah, I'm going to have to be careful with uh, with spacing, but that's okay. Um, it, I mean, I can collimate it to get it centered, and yeah, I think we'll be fine. I do want to make a cover as well for um, the mirror, or maybe a mirror box, I'm not sure which. Probably a cover, um, just for protection while I'm assembling the telescope. Or when you've got the telescope assembled, you want to cover the mirror. Yeah, it'll need a cover. Okay, so that's one drilled, um, countersunk, tapped, um, and test fitted. And now I just have two others to do. Yay. Transfer punches are super handy for moving um, a hole onto, uh, marking a hole onto um, a mating surface. So just a tappy tap tap once you've got it all lined up and it uh, makes a nice little, nice little mark so that you can do some drilling. The other tool that I find super useful 
is mounting your a mount for your tap so you can at least put it in a drill press and keep it vertical as it goes in and uh, it helps a lot that's the wrong cutting fluid but it's just aluminum I should go get my tap fluid so that's the fit without any uh, without any bolt on that side I'm pretty happy with the uh, with the alignment uh, I've sure done worst in the past okay and there it is so um, now I need to mount the uh, the triangles and we will have a mirror cell well a large chunk of a mirror cell. And in order to mount those, I need to figure out what hardware I'm going to use and before I do any drilling and tapping, but I'm thinking that that idea is just going to work. I'll just put a bolt through there so it sort of bolts this triangle on. And then I just have to screw on, uh, just drill and screws some spacers there, and we should be good to go. It seems to me it's a little close to the edge of the mirror. I don't know. I don't know why. I, I wonder if I didn't get the center of gravity right. Just, hmm. Okay, so I want to relieve the back of this a bit because there's not quite enough um, play here and I want uh, a bearing surface to sit on the round part of this thing. So I'm going to put a little chamfer on there and see if that works. You can see that. But there's a, a chamfering bit for metal. It produces nice results because it's mostly bearing on uh, most of the surface and then there's a little cutting edge there and it produces a pretty nice looking chamfer but there's still not enough play I don't think that feels a little better but I think I still need to make the uh, the chamfer a little larger yeah that looks much better okay that's what I need it to look like So when I buy fasteners, I buy them long, and then if I have to make them shorter, you can make them shorter. But you can't make a fastener longer. It does mean you have to clean them up, but, eh, whatever. But what do I do with the threaded rod off cuts?
still here? We appreciate your time and are working to help you just as soon as we can. Thank you, and please stay on the line.